Okay, year 11, you've got less than 24 hours until GCSE Physics Paper 2, so what are you doing right now? Hi, my name's Dr De Bruin. I'm a GCSE and A-level science teacher, and I also make revision videos on YouTube. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch this one hour summary of everything that could be in tomorrow's paper, but let's talk about some of the really common silly mistakes that people make that frustratingly cost them marks. Firstly, your equipment. You know by now that you must be writing in black pen, apart from graphs and diagrams and things, but hopefully you've also checked that your calculator is in the right mode. We want it in degrees, not radians, and not giving you answers in standard form that just confuse you, and also that you have got your protractor. It's part of the stated equipment that you have to have for AQA GCSE Physics Paper 2, and if you don't have a protractor, then you cannot do the scale diagrams for resolving forces. In the forces topic, remember that you calculate the extension of a spring by taking the final length and subtracting the initial or starting length. If you plot that extension against force, you should get a directly proportional graph. This means that as you double force, you will double extension and you get a straight line graph that passes through the origin, zero, zero. This will remain directly proportional until you exceed the limit of proportionality, at which point if you have force on your x-axis, then your graph will kick up and if you have extension on your x-axis, then your graph will kick to the right. People often get confused about balanced forces and think that if the forces are balanced, an object should be stationary, but that's not the case. The easiest way to get your head around this is imagine you're riding a bike and if you start cycling harder so the forward force is bigger, you accelerate. And if you break so the bigger force is the backwards force, then you slow down, you don't go backwards. So if those forces are balanced, then you just go at a constant speed. Your motion doesn't change. Remember that DT graphs and VT graphs look very similar. So just make sure if you're looking at one of those, you're paying really close attention to the Y axis. If you're asked about stopping distance, breaking distance, thinking distance, make sure that you actually are answering in terms of distance. Loads of students start talking about the time taken or the force taken. No, it's a distance. Remember that breaking distance will be increased by wet weather conditions or icy weather conditions or by the poor condition of the brakes or the tyres. It's not enough to just say car condition, weather conditions. If you're thinking about car safety features, you must be answering in terms of momentum. Yes, I know that a seatbelt will stop you going through the windscreen, but that is not part of your GCSE physics syllabus. The point of a seatbelt is that it stretches slightly, so all of the momentum that needs dissipating does so over a longer period of time, and therefore the force that you feel is smaller. In the waves topic, if you have to measure or label a wavelength, remember to go peak to peak or trough to trough. You can do it in the middle, but people always screw it up, so just don't even try. Remember, the amplitude is half the height of the wave because it's the maximum displacement from the centre line. If you're measuring wavelengths in a ripple tank, the easiest way to do this is to put a ruler alongside and then take a photograph. You're going to improve your precision by measuring the length of multiple waves, so usually 10 and then divide your length by 10. Even though an oscilloscope trace shows a transverse wave, a sound wave is actually a longitudinal wave. If you haven't already, watch the Electromagnetic Spectrum song one more time. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light, ultraviolet x-rays, gamma rays. As a wave passes the boundary between two different media, it will refract. This means it changes direction due to the change in speed. As a light ray passes into a glass block, it will refract towards the normal because the glass is more dense. And as it comes out, it will refract away from the normal. Remember that your magnetic metals are iron, cobalt, and nickel. But any conductor will develop a magnetic field if a current passes through it. We can use this principle to make a solenoid if we wrap that wire into a coil. And we can strengthen that magnetic field if we add an iron core. This makes an electromagnet, and we can make that electromagnet stronger either by passing a greater current through it or by increasing the number of coils of wire. The easiest way to test the strength of that electromagnet is then to try and pick up paper clips and see how many you can pick up. You can predict the direction of the motor effect using Fleming's left hand rules. So it has to be our left hand. Your thumb is going to predict the direction of motion. Your first finger is going to be the magnetic field going from north to south. And your second finger is current going from positive to negative. Remember, this is conventional current, so it's weird. It's not doing what the electrons are actually doing. If you want to make a motor, you're going to need a split ring commutator. 
And finally, I mentioned this before, paper two chemistry and nobody listened to me, but remember that those fundamental topics like energy can be examined in either paper. So you can still get little one markers on those. Good luck, year 11. You've got this.